Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at some more chain rule examples. And uh, yesterday, when I when I did the chain rule, I didn't simplify any of my answers. And we're going to see here that we sometimes we're going to want to do that. So let's find the second derivative of this function, which means we we have to find the derivative and then the derivative of the derivative. So let's get after that. Um, the first derivative is going to be given by 12 times x squared minus 5 squared and then times 2x. And then I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to take this 2x and multiply it through. So I'm going to call that 24x times x squared minus 5 squared. Now that's the first derivative. The second derivative is going to require me to use the product rule and also the chain rule. Um, I have a product. I'm going to think about 24x as my as my first function and now I'm thinking about x squared minus 5 squared as my second function. So the derivative of this is the first function times the derivative of the second. So that's 2 times x squared minus 5 to the first and then times 2x and then plus the second function which is x squared minus 5 squared times the derivative of the first and the derivative of 24x is just 24 and I'm going to leave my answer like that. Um, well, let me go ahead and simplify it and then we'll see what it says on the 89. If I simplified this, I would probably have 48x, 2 times the 24x, and then times that 2x, let's go ahead and call that 96x squared times x squared minus 5 plus 24 times x squared minus 5 squared. Now I'm going to try and take out a common factor of x squared minus 5 times 96x squared plus 24 times x squared minus 5 and finally I'll have x squared minus 5 times 96 and 24 is 120 and then minus I think that's 120. 5 times 20, yeah, I think I think this might be what our TI-89 says, but it might even pull out a 120 all the way in front. I don't know. Let's go take a look and see when we do that. 4 times x squared minus 5 cubed. So we're going to hit F3, differentiate. We want to differentiate 4 parentheses x squared minus 5 all cubed. And then we're going to do with respect to x, and we want the second derivative. Let's see what the... TI-89 says. Yeah, it did factor out the 120. But anyway, we can see that our answer matches our 89, so you can also do the second derivative on the TI-89. So let's get back to work here. Let's see. Find the point where F has a horizontal tangent. A horizontal tangent means that the derivative is equal to 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the derivative, and then I'm going to set it equal to 0. I'm going to use the quotient rule here because I have a quotient. Again, if this x had been a 7, I probably would bring this denominator up to the top with a negative exponent. But um, it's not a 7, it's an x, so I'm going to find the derivative using the quotient rule. The quotient rule is the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom. Now let's do a little side note over here. 2x minus 1 with the square root on it is the same thing as 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power. The derivative of this would be 1 half times 2x minus 1 to the negative 1 half and then times 2. Why do we have this times 2? This is only the second day of chain rule because that's the derivative of this inside function. That 1 half and not 2 is going to cancel and I'm going to get 1 over the square root of 2x minus 1. What I've done is the 1 half is a square root function and it's a negative exponent so I brought it to the bottom. And this is all over the bottom squared. 2x minus 1. Just I guess to the first power. When you square the square root. Um, Alright, so we want a horizontal tangent. That's going to be where the derivative is equal to 0. Now if your derivative happens to be a fraction, horizontal ta tangents will happen when the top equals 0. If for some reason this would have asked for a vertical tangent, that would have been the bottom equals zero. That would have been when the derivative is undefined. But here I want a horizontal tangent, so I'm going to set the top equal to zero. So let's take a look at this top function. I've got the square root of 2x minus 1 minus x over 
the square root of 2x minus 1. And I want this equal to 0. So I think I'm going to bring these two fractions together by dropping a 1 underneath that. And I'm going to crisscross multiply to bring these fractions together. See how that looks. Chris would be just 2x minus 1 because the square root times the same square root just removes the square root. And then cross will be 1 times x all over the square root of 2x minus 1. And we want to find out when this is equal to 0. So I can clean up my numerator and I can just get the fact that x minus 1 over the square root of 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. This will happen whenever the top equals 0 and that happens when x equals 1. And I believe I've got to find the point. That means I need an x and a y. So if we plug 1 in for x, I'm going to get 1 over the square root of 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1 over the square root of 1, which is just 1. 1 comma 1. Let's go take a look at that and see if we believe that. I'm going to graph this. This function was x over the square root of 2x minus 1. x divided by the square root, let's scoot this over just a little bit, the square root of 2x minus 1. And let's graph it. So do we think that at 1 comma 1 it has a horizontal tangent? Get a better window than that. Let's just go from negative 1 out to 3 and let's look from negative 1 up to 3 graph. So here it is. Um, yeah, I definitely believe that at 1 comma 1 we have a horizontal tangent. We can actually ask the calculator for the derivative or the slope at x equals 1 and we can see that the slope is 0. So we were right. Our answer to this is 1 comma 1. Okay, so let's go take a look at a couple more examples. Let's find g prime of x given that g of x is f of 2x cubed. So we've got a composite function. So g prime is going to be the derivative of the outside function. Again, we leave the inside function alone. A very common mistake is for uh, kids to take the derivative of the outside and also the derivative of the inside at the same time. That's the first step, the derivative of the outside function, and then times the derivative of the inside function, which would be 6x squared. That would be my answer to that example. Now let's take a look at a common AP question. Is from a graph, can we also do some derivatives from a graph? So I've got f and g here, and I have to use these graphs to find the following if they exist. We want to find h prime of 1, where h is the product of f and g. So let's find h prime of x first. We're going to have to use the product rule. So it's f times the derivative of g plus g times the derivative of f. That means that h prime of 1 is going to be f of 1 times g prime of 1 plus g of 1 times f prime of 1. And we're going to have to look at the graphs to get this. Well, f of 1 is simply the y value of f when x is 1. So if x is 1, f of 1 is 1, 2, 3. We can see that there. g prime of 1. Well, g is uh, this piecewise function here. At 1, g prime of 1 means the slope. The slope of g is negative here at 1, and it's going down 1 over 1, so that would be negative 1. Plus, g of 1 would be also 3 times the derivative of f of 1. At 1, f is going up 2 over 1. So I've got negative 3 plus 6, which is just 3. All right, now let's find um, k's derivative of 6 if k is the quotient of f and g. So we're going to use the quotient rule. So k prime of x is going to equal the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And I'm going to erase what I have up here so that I can continue to write up here. I, I still need to see this graph, so I hope that you have written all of this down because that's going bye-bye. Okay, bye. All right, here we go. So k prime, this is all right here. k prime at 6 is g of 6 times f prime of 6 minus f of 6 times g prime of 6 
all over g of 6 squared. And I should have put g of x down here squared. Please forgive me. Let's see if we can figure that out here. then. Where is 6? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here is 6. What is g of 6? 1, 2, 3, 4. What is f prime of 6? Okay, up here, oh, I think I just messed that up, didn't I? Well, let's go back and try that because I got my little graphs messed up. G of 6, G's graph is the darker, thicker one. G of 6 is 2. Ah, almost made a big mistake. Now, F prime of 6, F is up here. I need the derivative at this point. It looks like it's going down 1 over 2, so that's 1 half. And then minus F of 6, which there's my 4, times G prime of 6. Now, G is going down 2 over 1, so that's negative 2. And that's all over g of 6 squared. Here's g. g of 6 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So that's going to be 1 plus 8 over 4, or 9 fourths. All right, I think we've got two more examples here. Um, I'm going to have to get that graph back over here again. Let me see if I can't copy that, that graph real quick. We can see it. There we go. And I'm going to take a hold of this. I'm going to copy it. I should have had this on this slide over here. Off we go. Okay. So I'm going to paste it over here. There we go. Okay. Sorry about the delay. I should have done that beforehand. So let's find P prime of X. P prime of X is going to be F prime of G of X. That's the derivative of the outside function with the inside function left alone times the derivative of the inside, g prime of x. So p prime at 6 is going to be f prime of g of 6 times g prime of 6. So let's go see if we can find g of 6. g of 6 is 2, so I need f prime of 2 times g prime of 6. So here's f at 2, which is right here. Uh-oh. At 2 up to f, I have a sharp turn. The derivative from the left is going up 2 over 1, but the derivative from the right is 0. That slope is 0. That slope is 2. Those slopes don't match. Therefore, I get an undefined derivative. This does not exist. Let's do this last one. t prime of x is going to be g prime of f of x times f prime of x. There's your chain rule. So t prime at 7 is going to be g prime at f of 7 times f prime of 7. So let's see. What is f of 7? Here's f. Here's 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes, 1 after 6. f of 7 is 1, 2, 3.5. So I need g prime at 3.5 times f prime of 7. So what's the slope to g at 3.5? Right here. Here's 3.5. The slope to g looks like it's going up 1, 2, over 3. So this whole line is up 2 thirds. So g prime of 3.5 would be up 2 thirds. And an f prime of 7, here's my f graph, 7 is up here. So what's f prime of 7? f is going down 1 over 2. That looks like that's a negative 1 half. So that is going to be 2 thirds times negative 1 half should be negative 1 third. And that is my answer to that, and I will see you guys tomorrow.